morning. Today is the umpteenth day since our classrooms have been closed. That means we haven't been able to share snacks at school, we haven't been able to play sports, and really, the hardest part has probably been being apart from each other. Yeah, doing my work from home is not really tough. Listening to radio programs and keeping up with teachers through WhatsApp is all right, but I also miss my friends. Well, we have great news to announce. With this special TV program dedicated to us kids, we can be in it together. Our friends can all tune in at the same time, learn about the zoo, drawing, and other cool things, and we can share our progress with each other. Social distancing may have us apart, but virtual learning is bringing us together. Let's jump on into what is ahead for us today. In it together! Are you like me and love music? I love calming music to study to, fun music to dance to, and even soft music to fall asleep to. I love music so much that I want to learn to make some. Thankfully, we have our music teacher coming on now to help us make sweet sounds. Enjoy! Good morning once again, students. Thanks for returning to our music class. I am Miss Crawford, and I am back to help you make even more sweet sounds. Today, I have my friend Amory who will be helping us. And today, we will be doing something that is a lot of fun. We will be making our very own musical instrument. And we are going to use some of the very things that you have lying around your home, okay? So today, we are going to be making maracas. Now, the maracas is of the family of the percussion instrument. The word percussion means that you have to hit the instrument or you shake it or scrape it so that it makes a sound. And today I have some examples of the percussion instruments. We have, for example, a tambourine. And sometimes if you go to church, you may see someone playing a tambourine. We also have the drum. I know a lot of us would like to dance with the drum, right? Even if you have some sticks that you can find, you hit them together. And these are percussion instruments because they make a song when you hit them together. And also, of course, we have the maracas. This is what we're going to be making today. Now, the maracas is usually used in the Caribbean, and in the Latin music, in our Caribbean music, and we can also find the maracas being used at home here in our Brokdong music, and also in Garifuna music. So you can see it used in a different range of music and songs, and so it's very, it's a lot of fun. Some people here in Belize, we call it the shaka, we would say it in Creole, but they're also called shakers, or maracas is the more proper name. So today we're going to make our maracas and some of the things that you will need for the maracas are white paper or if you have colored paper you may also use those. To put inside the maracas so that it makes a sound you would need either rice, beans or even some rocks would make a cool sound. Also, what we will need are toilet paper tubes. You need one tube for each maraca. You also need tape and scissors. And of course, we need our bottles. All right, so you may use a small juice bottle to put your beans or your rice in so that we can shake it up after, okay? So are you ready, Amory? All right, can you take a bottle? And I will also get a bottle. We're going to make a funnel, which is an easy instrument that would help us to make the things go easily inside the bottle, whichever one you choose, okay? So let's use your bottle. Which one are you going to choose? The rice, the rice? all right. So can you pour it in slowly? Pour it in. All right, good, it's going in. And you pour in whatever you're going to use to about a third 
out of the way, all right? All right, that's good. And I think for my maracas, I'm going to use some beans. So can you help me please, Amory? We're going to pour the beans in. Be careful, that's fine. Just a little more. Oh boy. Okay, good. I think we have enough beans. I'm going to pour the rest that we have in there. Good. And we're going to close the bottle. So good. We have our beans and our rice inside. So now we need to make a handle so that we can hold it properly. Now for this one, you are going to need a toilet paper tube. So let me help you, Amory. You're going to get the toilet paper tube and we are going to cut it like this. Just take one section and cut in a straight line. Put your, put your hand, yes, so that you don't snip your fingers. Good. Now what you will do, let's take yours. We are going to tighten the tube around the mouth of the bottle. And then, let's so hold it like this, and tighten it so where you cut it is going to overlap. And it makes a handle. And for it to stay, we're going to need some tape. So can you take that tape, Emery? You want that one? Okay. So hold it just like so. And we are going to tape the tube to the bottle so that it doesn't move. All right? So let me do that. Let's go around and around to make sure that it is tight and secure. Good, so here we have our tape bottle. So now you can hold it. You already see it coming together, right? We have the sound, we have our handle. Now you may want to decorate it a little. You want to decorate it some? Okay, for this now, we're going to use another sheet of paper. Would you like the orange or the white? The orange, okay. So for the orange, we are going to bend the paper in half. So we're only going to use half of the paper and we're going to cut it quickly. And when I make mine, I'm going to make use the other half that you don't use, right? So we don't waste the paper. So here you go. So now we are going to take this and we're going to roll it around the handle. Let's do that. Put your paper down in here and let's roll it around and around. We have to roll it straight though and around. All right. Good job. Okay. Want to take the tape and stick it? Stick it along. Okay. Good job. Can you hold it? Let me get another piece for you. Can you hold that, please? We're going to make sure that it is all secure. Good job. Now, what you can do, you may have some extra paper here. What you can do is just turn, twist the paper so that you don't have that extra and you can stuck it into the tube, or you can cut it off if you would like, so that you don't have all that extra paper. Very good. If you want, Amory, you can take another piece of paper and put on the top, and you can write your name on it. You would you like to do that? Okay, I have the tape over here. I'm going to set the tape at the back of the paper, and I am going to set it right here on the front. Now we have some markers. We're going to use the markers to decorate your maracas. Would you like to get a marker? Which marker would you like to use for? The red marker, okay. You have another one, one that's going to be 
one that can easily show on the orange because you're using orange. Okay, you have black, very good. So you can go ahead and write your name. Awesome job. And now I am making my maracas so that we can have a pair. We can have two because we're going to sing. Nice job done, Amy. Can you hold it up? Let me see. Good job. You made your maracas. Awesome. And then I think I will use a purple and green. Can you get me the purple and green marker, please? And I'm just going to do some music notes on mine. All right. So I'll make a quarter note, a half note, a whole note, another quarter, a half, and a whole note. All right, so we have two maracas. Can you hold up yours? Good, so listen to the sound of the one with the rice. It's a bit softer, this one. Because you have heavier material in there with the beans, so it sounds a bit different. Do you hear the difference? All right, so what I want you to do, we are going to hold that, and I am going to use this pair. All right, and let's practice making different rhythms. You want to practice two different rhythms with the maracas. For this first one, I just want you to do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Can you try that? Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Very easy, right? But you can keep the beat with a sound very easily. Awesome. So that's one. Let's try another one. We can do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Continue. Very good. Very good. So what's the first one that we learned? One, two, 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 one, two. Very good. And now the second one, one more time. All right, awesome job. You know what, Amory? This has all been fun, but I want us to be able to do this while we are singing. So here's a song, or here's a medley of songs that we are going to sing using the drum and the maracas. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Again, oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Alive, alive. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. Mr. Martin, how a leaky old dory, kill a bell until he get dry. Mr. Martin, how a leaky old dory, kill a bell until he get dry. Oh, the leaky leaky old dory, kill a bell until he get dry. Oh, the leaky leaky old dory, till he get dry. Mr. Martin, how a leaky old dory, kill a bell until he get dry. Mr. Martin, how a leaky old dory, kill a bell until he get dry. Oh, the leaky leaky old dory, kill a bell until he get dry. Oh, the leaky leaky old dory. All right, so we got the chance to use our percussion instruments today, which was the maracas. Shake your maracas, Amy, shake them, shake them. And we also got to use the Garifuna drum today. Thank you so much for joining us, boys and girls, in making sweet songs, and I'll see you next time. 
Who knew that making sweet sounds could be as enjoyable as hearing them? That was a pretty cool session, and I am looking forward to even more. Maybe I can even become the next Leela Vernon. How about you? Which Belizean legends do you like? Let us know in the comments while we go for this next short break. Welcome back to In It Together. I'm Tristan. You might not be able to guess it, but I love dancing. Dancing is one of my ways to have fun and to express myself. When we get into some cultural dances, dancing is even educational. So I hope you're ready to let loose because the time is now dance o'clock. Miss Cassell will be your guide. Enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome to Dance O'Clock, where the dancing never stops. My name is Miss Chrisel Gabriel, but you can call me Miss Chris or Miss Chrisel, and I'll be your instructor for the next few weeks. So guess what? We'll be doing all types of dances and a different one each week. So get up, get ready, and let's dance the time away. Welcome back everyone. I hope you have your basket and your skirts ready for today's class. We're going to be doing a basket dance. In addition to some of the things that we did last week, we're going to learn how to use our basket as props while we're dancing. But hey, before we get into that, you know we need to stretch so we don't hurt ourselves, right? So let's put the baskets on the side. Thank you. And don't forget my little helper, Erin. She's always going to be here to show you the moves also. So let's get right into it. Everybody in first position. Great job. Take a deep breath in and out and in and out. Releve with it and up on your tippy toes and out and up and out. Look left and right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down and up. Side to side. Circle. Reverse. Good job, shoulders. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Let's go. Up, down. Roll it back. And one, two. Three, to the front. One, two, three. Good job. Alternate up to the side. Alternate. Five, six, seven. Shake it faster. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Faster. Five, six, seven. Hands out to the side. Now we're going to press. One, two, three, four. Now let's go swimming. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take it back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Open up your legs. Second position. Hands on your hips. Rock side. Let's go. A little faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Good job. And stretch it over. Five, six, seven. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For fours. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, twos. One, Two, one, two singles. One and two and three and four. To the front. Three, four and back. Two, three, front again. One, two, three, four and back. Two, three, four. Bend your knees. One and up. Two, three, four. Bounce it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold it there. Yes, stay up straight. Hands up. And rock. 
Good job. Straighten up. Close your legs. Now we're going to go like this. Take it up. And we go in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Now, before we go to the floor, let's do a few jumping jacks. Let's go. Ready? Ten. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Now we're pumping. One, two, three, four. Good job. And open. And close. And open. And close. One more. Open. And close. Good. Take a deep breath in. And out. Go to the ground. Quick butterfly. And one, two, three. Head down. One, two, three, four. Again. One, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Roll it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Legs forward. Take a deep breath. Reach over. And up. And up. And up. Great job. So, we just completed our quick stretch for today. Let's stand up and get ready to review all that we did last week. So, what were the four movements that we did? What was the first one? What's that Shine called? The Shine the shilling. Then we did? Turns. We did our turns. Then we did? Shuffle. Good, the shuffle. And after that? The sedonga. Yes, the sedonga. So we did four movements last week, and I hope that you've been practicing because we're going to use them today in our in our dance. So let's get our baskets. Quick, quick, quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Do you have your basket? Great. So I want you to look at your basket and see that this part is empty. So it's where we're going to put things in, imaginary things. So we need to use our imagination. This part we will put on our head or in our hand like this. So let's pretend that we are in the plantation and we're going to go and pick some crops. So we're going to get down on our knees, put your basket in front of you, and you're going to pretend that you're digging. So let's dig. Take it up, put it in your basket. Other side, dig. Put it in your basket. Good. Now another thing that we can pretend is, let's pretend to wash our clothes. So take your clothes, or you can use the ends of your skirts. Let's use it as a prop. Dip it in the water and scrub, 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 scrub. I bet some of you didn't even know that in the olden days, people used to wash on hand. Everybody only washes in the washing machines now because it's so much easier. But if you learn how to wash your clothes on your own, it's so much better. So let's wash, 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 wash. Then guess what? We have to wring it out. Wring it out, wring it out. Good, make sure all the water comes out. Throw away that water. Scoop up some fresh water. Dip it in. Rinse it out, rinse it out, wring it out again, and now we're going to pretend to pin it on the line. So get your imaginary clothespins, and we're going to hang our clothes up. So we're going to pin, pin, pin. Got it? So wash, 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 ring, 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 hang it out, pin, pin, pin. Good job. All right, so let's stand up. 
Throw away that water. Good. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to use it on our heads. Now this is a dance move that we call the Ebo. It doesn't have to be with a basket. You can put your hands on your hips. But the Ebo basically is when you're on your tippy toes and you're going to be moving your hips side to side. But try not to leave your knees open. It needs to be close. So you're supposed to look all sophisticated when you're doing this movement. Like you're modeling. And we're going to put the basket on our head and we're going to do that movement. So let's demonstrate, Irene, show them how to do it. Yes, yeah, so we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's that called? Ebo. So that's called the Ebo, and that's your fifth move that you learned in Creole so far. So now we're going to do the scoop. Now, how do we scoop? We go scooping like this. So it's like a little jump. Jump one, jump two, jump one, jump two. But we're going to be using our hands to scoop. So let's use our basket and we scoop. Scoop and scoop and scoop and scoop. Good job. Now let's move on back. We're going to do one more thing, OK? One more thing, and this is going to be tricky. We're going to throw our baskets in the air, and we have to catch it before it falls to the ground. So let's see how we're going to do that. Make the empty part face outside. Make the bottom half face you. And you're going to turn to the side. Don't throw it too high. You're just going to throw it and catch it. Throw it and catch it. Yes, again, throw it and catch it. Oops, don't worry, it takes practice. Let's try again. Throw it and catch it. Good job. So now we have another move. It's the throw. Good. So we're going to combine all of those moves into our nice dance that we were doing last week. So let's put our basket down because we're going to use them in a little while. Let's do it slowly. We're going to start off saying, I want to know who say, Creole no got no culture. And you say, culture. Good. And then we do four shine the shillings. One, two. Next leg. One, two. Good job. Then we go into our turn. One, two, three, four. And then we do our shuffle. Shuffle, two, three, four. Shuffle, two, three, again. Shuffle, two, three, four. Shuffle, two, three. Good. Now we do our sedunga. Down, two, three, four. And up, two. One more time. Down, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Good. Now we're going to get our basket. Get your basket, pick it up. Good. Put it on your head. And we're going to e One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Stop. Now scoop two times. Scoop and scoop again. Scoop and scoop. Good. After the scoop, we're going to do the throw. And then we're going to wind it all the way down to the ground so that we can wash our clothes. Good? So let's do the throw now. And throw and catch. Put it up. And go down, 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 down. It's time to wash your clothes. And wash, wash, wash. Ring it out. Pin it on the line. Again, wash, wash, wash. Ring it out, pin it on the line. Good. Throw that water away. Good. Now let's pick up some of the other props that we have on the ground. Put it in our basket. Put it on our hip. Pick it up. Don't let it fall out. Put it on your hip. Hold the end of your skirt. 
and you're going to say goodbye. Goodbye, let's go. Yes, good job. So we're going to try and put all of that together with our music, OK? So put the basket back down. And let's get ready. Culture. Good job. Shine shilling. One, two, next leg. One, turn it around. Now we're gonna go into the shuffle. Next side. And. Go for your basket. Evo. Scoop. Go down. Wash. Again. Put in your props. Pick it up. And we go. just learn your first mini Creole basket dance. Isn't that so fun? Yes, it is. And I hope that you all enjoyed and practice, 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 because Miss Griselle wants to see what you have learned, OK? Great. Thanks for dancing with us today, kids. Did you have fun? If you were practicing your dance moves and want us to show you off, Ask mom or dad to help you record your moves on video. And then you can email it to us at initogetherbz at gmail.com. Or you can simply send it to us on Facebook at initogetherbelize. We want to inspire others with your moves. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope to see you again soon. That was really fun, right? Belize is a diverse country with many different cultures. So when it comes to dancing, we have everything from punta to salsa and everything in between. That session just now was pretty fun. So we will take a little commercial break and if it worked up your appetite, that's good. Because up next, we will move into children's cooking show. Do me a favor, please raise one or even two hands if you love your belly. Since school has been closed, I've averaged about 20 trips to the fridge every day. So I am looking forward to what's coming up next, Chef Beard Kids. This cooking show will teach us how to feed ourselves with minimal adult supervision. Let's get cooking. So guys, I'm back. I'm Minnie Beard, this is my dad, Chef Beard. And this is Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cousin Bear. That's all right, guys. <laughs> Little Mini Bear is back with us today. And also, we have special invited guest, Cousin Daniel, aka Cousin, Cousin Bear. Bear. Okay, guys, so what are we going to do today? Fresh <laughs> All right. High five. High five, Daniel. High five. High five. All right. Guys, this is a very simple recipe. It's very fun, and I think children of all age can actually do this one with a little adult supervision. All right, guys, let's jump right into the ingredients. Mini Bay, what's the first thing we're gonna need? Two eggs and a quarter cup of milk. Cousin Bear? And we'll, have, and we'll also be using a little bit 
little bit of vanilla and a little bit of cinnamon. That's right. A little bit of vanilla and a little bit of cinnamon. Well, Guys, well, I'm also going to use a little bit of salt, a pinch of salt. And this recipe calls for four servings. So we're going to need four slices of bread. You can use white bread. Today we're using white bread. But you can also make this recipe um, using wheat bread. So it's your choice. Um, the wheat bread, French toast is also really good, really healthy, and I recommend that one. You ready, guys? I'm excited! Let's, Let's get it cooking! So, guys, so the first thing we need to do is to break these two eggs into a shallow dish. Something um, wide enough that we could dip our slices of bread in. So now today, Cousin Bear, you have one egg. Mini Bear, you have one egg. You rough Mini Bear, break this egg. A little more, a little more. Stop it. A little more. All right. Okay, gently. Good job! He did a good job right in the garbage. Cousin Bear. Whoa, this is a this is a different technique. This is a different technique. <laughs> Whatever gets the job done. <laughs> But he got most of the egg in the dish and I think it can work. And surprisingly, not one drop of eggshell in the dish. Why is it important to wash your hands? So the germs don't get in your food. What do you think, Daniel? Because of the virus. Because of the virus. Exactly. Wash your hands. Alright. Next ingredient. A quarter cup of milk. Mini beer, pour this quarter cup of milk in our dish very gently. Ooh, that's looking good. That's looking good. <laughs> Smells good, he says. Try to get the teaspoon of, of, of. vanilla. One teaspoon of vanilla. A little more. Yeah. Good job. Get up in there. A half a teaspoon of cinnamon. It adds a little flavor if I put a pinch of salt. So, a little bit of salt, and we're gonna have Daniel mix this up. This is fun, guys! Looking like chocolate milk. All right, now we have a really good make sure here oh man you can smell the vanilla you can smell the cinnamon so what are we going to do next mix the bread exactly we have four slices of bread and we want to uh, we want to give it a good dip on, on both sides so we're going to flip it on the next side and we are going to set this aside. Go ahead and do the rest. Did a great job. Good job, guys. Good job. All right. And guys, it's time for what? Frying. Frying. Let's get this on the stove. We'll be using a tablespoon of butter to grease this pan. Give it a little swirl. I recommend that you guys use a nice spatula to do this. 
I think I have a little space here to put two of these French toasts. So let's get two of them in at a time. We're gonna finish faster, don't you think? We're gonna give these a couple minutes on each side and then we're gonna flip it over. Daddy Pig just flipped the pound cake from the pan and then it went on the roof. So then the pound cake just fell on his nose. <laughs> <laughs> let's flip this one around. Oh, wow. Look at that color. What do you think? You think I can flip it? Yes. Huh? Yes. You ready? Huh? One. Two. Three. Oh. A little higher. Two. Whoa! That was cool. There we go. It worked. Whoa. See that? Whoa. I'll give you one thing. You give me one thing. This. It's gonna be one penny more. Hey, young man, wait for the syrup. Ooh. Now it's time for taste test. All right, cheers, guys. Cheers. Wait, 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 wait. If I had a job, I would probably try to hire Chef Beard or Mini Beard to be my personal guides in the kitchen. But even based on what we just saw, I will now be able to cook more than just boiled eggs or cornflakes. I think I'm a pro in the making. Today has been very fun, right? I think so. We will go for our final commercial break now, and then we will move into our final segment for the day. Stay tuned. Welcome back to In It Together. Be honest, raise your hand if all this coronavirus talk and lockdown has made you confused, stressed out, or even annoyed. Everyone has been affected some way or the other, even us kids. We need to make sure we address our feelings and thoughts. So now we move on into Peace Out, which will help us respond well to things that have been bothering us. Enjoy guys and peace out. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to Peace Out. I am Miss Brennan and today we will be talking about coping and coping strategies. Coping is the process of developing ways to get through difficult times. When we are having a difficult time, we should try to do something to solve the problem or improve the situation. This is called problem-focused coping. When we are not able to do that, then we should try to change the way we respond to the problem or the situation. That is, change our thoughts and our feelings about the situation. This is called emotion-focused coping. In Belize and around the world, it is a very difficult time for a lot of people. Children are not in school, and some parents have lost their jobs or are working from home. There is not much that can be done to change or improve the situation. But one way parents and children can change how they respond to the situation is by creating a calm corner. So what is a calm corner? Well, it is a set and agreed upon space that you can use in your home to take a break and calm down when you're experiencing big or strong emotions. It is a great way to remind children and adults that it is okay to step away from a situation to calm our bodies and our minds. How do we create a calm corner? Well, the first thing we need to do is to identify a space somewhere cozy, maybe a corner in the living room or a private area somewhere in the house that can be used to take that time for ourselves. We need to have comfortable seating. If it's on the ground, have comfortable pillows, have a floor cushion. 
we need to have a feeling chart or some kind of strategy that we can use to identify what we're feeling and some visual aids or some activities that we can use to calm ourselves down. We need to identify what activities appeal to our senses and assist us with regulation. So we need to have things that appeal to our sense of sight, something that we see, things that appeal to our sense of hearing, something that we can hear, things that appeal to our sense of smell, something that we can smell, things that appeal to our sense of taste, so snacks or something sweet, something that we can taste, and things that we can touch, some kind of sensory activity and something to do, whether it be coloring books, puzzles, something that we can physically do to help us to get to a better space using the calm corner. So here I have set up a slight small calm corner right in the couch. That will be an area that we can come to calm down. All right, so we can look at the activities that we have here. So there is something to see. This is a stuffed animal and when it's press the heart, it lights up. So we can consistently press the heart and it's something to see. It is also something to hear. As you can listen, it plays songs. It's something to touch. You can touch the nice and fuzzy parts of it. We also have some cushions that we can touch and squeeze. We have a ball that is nice and soft and cushiony. Smell. We have things to smell in our nice handy box here where we have some scented markers. So if we can do an activity, we will smell the different smells associated with each. So this one smells like orange. This one smells like green apple. And we also have something to taste in this corner. We have some nice raisins, this nice small box of raisins to keep in the corner. We also have something to do. We have a book that we can read. We have a coloring book that we can use to color. We have paper and a pen. We can write, we can fold it to make cards. So we have all of the things that appeal to our senses and something to do. To use the calm corner, we must first visit it together with our parents so that we are able to see what we have and know what to do. So right now we're going to try out some of the materials in the nice calm corner. So the first thing I would like us to try out today is to touch something. So we have our stuffed animal that we touch. We can listen to the songs, we can play along, we can rub and touch the nice fur to get us nice and calm. If that is not something that your child is interested in, then you can sit and read a book together. This one says, hey, wake up. Hi, big guys, open your eyes. What do you say? It's a brand new day. Yawn, stretch, touch your toes, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Wiggle your nose. Shout out loud. Good morning, son. Happy morning, everyone. Hey, little guys, open your eyes. What do you say? It's a brand new day. That's one thing we can do. We can also color or write. And writing is a good activity if somebody is angry. We can write out their feelings, they can draw, they can doodle, they can scratch. Whatever it is to get to that place of being calm. After trying out the activities together, several times, parents can use the calm corner as a way to have their children regulate. So they will be able to visit the calm corner on their own after they understand exactly what it is that they're supposed to be doing in the calm corner. After visiting the corner a few times together, and even after children visit the corner on their own, process what happened in the corner. So you need to ask them, how were you feeling before you visited the corner? What did you try when you were in the corner? 
How are you feeling now after visiting the corner? If they're not feeling better, then you ask them to go back to the corner and try out a different activity. If they are feeling better, then you can further process and ask them what can they do differently before they start feeling the way they felt before they went into the corner. If you're not able to identify a space in your home to use as a calm corner, then you can have a coping toolbox. Coping toolboxes are boxes filled with things children can use when tough situations come up or they experience hard emotions. The materials we would need for a coping toolbox includes a small box, could be a shoe box or some kind of plastic tub with a lid, you will need paper, note cards, or journals, something that they can use to write, coloring utensils and writing utensils, and we already have some crayons in our box here, pipe cleaners or strings or beads, something they can play with. We have some blocks in our box, a stress ball that can either be something like our small squishy ball here, or it can be something that you make from balloon and rice. You can have a feelings chart that they create, something to smell, something to taste. And all of these, ensure you have a large enough box or a small box with small items that can be used. In the case of the papers that we have here, you can always fold them in four, like making a card and set them in the box. And kids can do the same thing. When they're feeling angry, when they're feeling upset, when they're having big feelings, they can go in the box and either find something to color, build with the blocks, build something to manipulate with their hands. They can use the markers to draw and color, and they will also be doing something and smelling something at the same time. And this box should be placed in a designated area that children choose together with parents so that whenever they are feeling big, strong feelings, they can use the toolbox. And you would process in the same way that you process after using the calm corner. That wraps up today's Peace Out session. If you watched and enjoy, encourage your other friends to also tune in. You can even invite your parents or older siblings to watch along with you because we're all in it together. Thanks for watching and peace out. That was so relaxing and fun, right? I used to wonder why I would be feeling so tense or heavy, especially after watching the news or listening to my parents speak about what our country is going through right now. Talking about what we are feeling and knowing what we are feeling are important in making sure we remain happy. It even allows us to know what our parents are feeling, so we don't feel too sad when they seem worried or annoyed. We're really all in it together, and we all want to enjoy. Peace out. So, that wraps up In It Together for today. Remember, this is a special show dedicated to us. Schools are closed, but we can still learn together, play together, dance together, draw together, and have endless fun together. With our TVs or tablets or phones, we can link up in a productive way. And it's also a big change from just being at home, idling for most of the day, which has gotten really boring. Remember, this show, Just For Us, will air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, from 11 in the morning until midday. We air on Channel 7 all over the country and on Facebook at In It Together Belize. Please tell your friends and family members to join in on the fun. We are going through some pretty weird times, but don't worry. We'll get through this because we're in it together. Thanks for tuning in today.